Agatha Christie's Poirot. From the thrill-packed pages of Agatha Christie's unforgettable stories of corpses, clues, and crime, Mutual now brings you, complete with bowler hat and magnificent mustache, your favorite detective, Hercule Poirot, in Murder Wears a Mask. I'd like to speak to Mr. Poirot. Uh, won't you come in? Your name, please? Richard Fields. Uh, Mr. Poirot's busy at the moment. Please sit down. I'll tell him you're here. Thank you. Uh, there's some magazines on the table at your left. Uh, Mr. Poirot, it's a Mr. Fields. Eh? Well, he can wait. He's a very patient man. He only rang the bell once. Here, Abigail, I want you to taste this sauce now. Mmm. Mmm, it's good. Good? Oh, ma foi, Abigail, it is superb. There are only three people in the world who know how to prepare this sauce. And you are about to become the fourth. Now, you take two tablespoons... Chief, there's but... someone waiting. Uh, ah, oui, Miss, Monsieur Fields, eh? Eh bien, I suppose we must see him. Come. Mr. Fields, this is Mr. Perrault. Oh, how do you do? Bonjour, monsieur. Well, it uh, must be an important matter which calls you away from your business at the moment when it is most active. Well, as a matter of fact, I don't recall mentioning my business. But it was not necessary, monsieur. The Journal of Wall Street in your pocket tells me you are a stockbroker. Since it is only now three o'clock, it is obvious you left your office shortly before the closing of the exchange. Oh. Now, you would not do this for a minor matter. Oh, uh, you're right. I've come to you on a matter that affects me very deeply. It concerns my daughter's welfare. Uh-huh. You see, Mr. Perot, she's quite young, not quite 18. And at that, she's rather immature for her age. Uh, yes, yes, monsieur, but uh, let us come to the point, please. I have a sauce cooking, uh, important business waiting for me. Well... Now, uh, what is the young lady's difficulty? She met this ham actor when he went up to her school to address the dramatic society. He's still quite distinguished looking in a dissolute sort of way, and she promptly became infatuated with him. It's partly his reputation, I guess. He's been a matinee idol for 20 years. Well, that uh, seems very normal behavior for a young girl of her age. Yes, but the horrible part of it is that he became equally interested in her. Why, the man's old enough to be her father. Oh, you must have heard of him. His name... Wait, 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 monsieur, please. I should prefer to hear all the facts before you mention any names. I never like to engage in idle gossip. This is no gossip, I assure you. I was up at this... At this man's apartment only an hour ago. He was showing my daughter a necklace he had bought her as a wedding present. Oh, no, monsieur. He woos her with diamonds. <laughs> it is not illegal. In this case, Mr. Perot, it's immoral. She's too young to see through it. Uh-huh. But uh, why do you come to me? I want you to help me break up this affair. Oh, monsieur. The man I... has led a sordid life. You're an investigator. If you dug around, you could produce proof of some of the things he's done. Proof that even Laura would have to believe. I'm sorry, monsieur. You've come to the wrong person. My talents, such as they are, are not available for such enterprises. Good day, sir. I can afford to pay you well. Monsieur, no one in the world is rich enough to buy Hercule Poirot. Now, you will excuse me, please. I have important work in the kitchen. All right. I can't force you to do it. But I want you to know that you're leaving me no alternative. Eh? What do you intend to do? Something very simple, Mr. Poirot. And at the same time, very conclusive. Good day. Come in. Oh, Hackett, you got here fast. I was worried, Mr. Tremaine. This is the first time you've ever called me back on my day off. I suppose that's a pretty reckless thing to do to a valet these days. No, sir, just startling. Is anything wrong? I'm afraid so. You ever seen this before? Why, yes, sir. It's the jewel case you had out this morning. I gathered it contained a pearl necklace which you bought for Miss Fields. Yes. $10,000 necklace. A wedding present. Yes, sir. 
Open the box, Sack. They're very lovely, sir. Are they? Oh, yes, sir. Very lovely. Hackett, you're a liar. I beg your pardon? You're a liar. You know perfectly well these are not real pearls. Mr. Tremaine, surely you're just... You've made a mistake, Hackett. You thought I was a complete fool, didn't you? You waited till Laura and I left for the theater at two o'clock and then substituted these cheap, cultivated pearls for the real ones, hoping I'd never find out until it was too late. I couldn't do that, sir. The pair of pearls were in the safe, and I don't know the combination. Who put them in the safe? I did. You asked me to. But I didn't ask you to leave the safe open, did I? I remember now that I didn't hear you twirl the knob. What did you do with those pearls? I never touched them. Very well. I'll give you your chance. I'm turning you over to the police. Don't touch that phone, Tremaine. Oh, you cheap, bungling thief posing as a valet. I should have realized what a bad performance it was. Well, I'm sure your experience will come in handy in prison. Drop that phone, Tremaine. Get your hands off me. All right, Tremaine, you asked for it. What are you... Put down that knife. Put down that... No! I can't... I... Exit. Mr. Tremaine. Hello, Mr. Fields. Yes. This is Archie Tremaine. Tremaine? Where's Laura? Right here at my place. You filthy swine. I told you this afternoon I wouldn't have her seeing you. Well, I don't see how you can stop her. We're getting married tonight. Married? Yes. We'd like to have your blessing. Why don't you come down? I wouldn't come down. Yes. Yes, maybe I will. Sure. I'll give you my blessing, Tremaine. Wait for me. I'll be down in 20 minutes. Don't worry. I'll be here. And so will the police. Inspector Stevens, I tell you, the next time we have dinner together, it will be in a place without a telephone. Then I will be certain at least we can uh, finish our dessert without interruption. Uh, here we are. This is the place. You could have stayed and finished your dessert, Poirot. I didn't take you by force. It is the same thing. Why, you, you very slyly tell me you have received an anonymous call reporting a murder. Oh, uh, you know I cannot resist such a situation. Uh, he has excellent taste, this Monsieur Archie Tremaine. Me, I like very much these brownstone houses. Uh, nobody home. Place is dark. Uh, we're probably on a wild goose chase. But the door, it is open. Oh. And the light switch, I presume, is here. So, and now? Oh, we better start looking around just to make sure. Now, let's try the library first. It should it be... There's no doubt down this hall here. All these brownstones, you know, they are very much the same. Yeah. Inspector, flash your light around, please, eh? All right. Uh-huh. Here's the switch. Shut up. Tremaine. Tremaine. Yeah, he's dead all right. Stabbed through the heart. Stabbed once, Inspector, with, with that letter opener. He must have dropped on the spot. There's no other blood around, just that one big pool he's lying in. And these bloody footprints all over the floor. Uh, they must be the murderers, Poirot. He stood over the body to make sure Tremaine was dead and didn't notice that the blood was oozing around his shoes. Then he went over to the desk here, maybe to make a call, then into the bathroom to wash his hands. He came out, headed for the door, and... And uh, what, Inspector? Well, I'll be... Footprints stopped suddenly. I don't get this. Inspector, have you observed this newspaper? Half the front page is torn off. You think the murderer dried his shoes with it? No, no, Inspector. I, I believe this is what happened. He did all the things you have described. Then, when he reached this point where the footsteps stopped, he realized that his shoes were bloody. Well, he could not go out wearing such shoes, and he could not carry them in his hands. Now, he looked down, and voila, he sees another pair of shoes. Fine, clean shoes, free of any blood. Where? On the feet of the dead man. You mean these shoes belong to the murderer? But obviously. They are covered with blood, and the laces are open because the shoes are a trifle too small. 
-hmm. Now the murderer put on the dead man's shoes, he finds they are too large. So, he tears up part of the newspaper and stuffs it into the shoes in order that he may walk with more comfort. By Joe, Poirot, I believe you're right. Eh. Now, all you have to do is to find the owner of these shoes. Uh, we'll try it through checking the manufacturer's code number. Wait, perhaps I can make the task easier, Inspector. I think you will find that the owner of these shoes is a stockbroker named George Feeds. Now, look, Poirot, this is too much. You've been working your little gray cells overtime. How can no, you... No, 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 no. I will explain, mon ami. I will explain. You will notice that the heel of the right shoe is worn down considerably more than the left. Earlier today, this uh, Monsieur Fields, who limps rather badly, came to see me. He uttered dire threats against someone who fitted the description of poor Monsieur Tremaine here. So, you see, Inspector, I employ the sharp eyes and the ears rather than the little gray cells. And they tell me that you had better question this Monsieur Fields at once. Well, Poro, you were right. We've got Fields here at headquarters under lock and key. He's our man, all right. He was trying to burn Tremaine's shoes when we called on him. You are sure he is the guilty man, eh? Of course. He tried to tell us some cock and bull story about getting a call from Tremaine and finding him dead when he got there. Says he got his shoes all bloody before he saw the body, and then he became panicky and changed them. Just as I thought. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's the killer, all right. You said yourself he threatened Tremaine. It's an open and shut case. Uh, myself, I always mistrust the open and shut cases. Uh, tell me, what of the anonymous telephone call you received? The way I figure it, Poirot... Fields called us himself, and then he thought maybe he could beat the rep, so he wiped off all his fingerprints, changed shoes with a dead man, and ducked. Oh, oh. a very intelligent reconstruction, Inspector. Very intelligent. <laughs> Alors, I must return to my office now. If anything new... I'll let you know. Good, good. Bonjour, Inspector. Mr. Poirot. Oh. Oh, Mademoiselle Fields. Mr. Poirot, may I please talk to you for just a moment? Oh, but of course, but of course. I, I know how distraught you must be. Eh, well, here is a bench in the corridor. I, I don't think we will be disturbed here. Thank you. Mademoiselle, let me assure you of my great sympathy. If there is anything I can do... There I... is, Mr. Poirot. You can prove my father is innocent. Oh, that would be extremely difficult, Mademoiselle. All the evidence seems to point to his guilt. Well, I don't care about the evidence. He didn't do it. He couldn't. He was in my office, Miss Fields, and he threatened to take desperate measures. He lost his head, but he didn't mean what he said. And he was there in Monsieur Tremaine's apartment about the time of the murder. He admits this. Well, of course he admits it. He has nothing to hide. Ah, but at first, mademoiselle, he did deny it. And oh, the exchange of shoes, the removal of the fingerprints. Oh, no, these do not seem to be the acts of an innocent man. Mr. Poirot, he was trapped. Someone lured him down there and planted the evidence to convict him. That is what he tells us, and I will not say it is impossible, you know, but there must be proof. Don't worry, I'll find it somehow. George will help me. George? Oh, that is Monsieur Hackett, eh? Yes, Archie's valet. He knew a lot about Archie. He's downstairs now talking to the detectives. I'll go and get... Oh, oh here he comes. George! George! I beg you... Oh, Miss Stevens... How are you? George, this is Mr. Poirot, the great detective. Well, how do you do, sir? I've heard of you, of course. Enchanté, monsieur. I have heard fine things about you, too. Oh, thank you. George, you've got to help me find the murderer. Well, Miss Fields... Go on, say it. You think my father's guilty? No, I won't say that, but I don't see how I can help you. Well, did Mr. Tremaine have any enemies? Anyone who hated him? Enemies? I don't think so. Of course, there were many people who disliked him. Why, monsieur? Well, frankly, sir, he was rather an egomaniac. He couldn't stand being in the background for a minute. It was always top billing for Archie Tremaine. But as I told the police, I don't... Uh, I can't think of anyone who'd want to kill him. Well, maybe some woman who was uh, jealous about the necklace. The necklace? Yes, the pearl necklace he was going to give me. You were there, George, when he showed it to me that afternoon. Oh, uh, yes, miss. I heard some conversation about it. Of course, I didn't see it. Mr. Poirot, the police found the necklace, didn't they? Matched pearls with a small diamond clasp. No, mademoiselle, I, I do not believe so. I myself saw everything that was found in the house, but 
This is the first I've heard of a necklace. Oh. Uh, monsieur, I, I hope you will not be offended if I, if I ask about your movements on the day of the murder. That was the first thing the police asked me, Mr. Poirot. It was my day off. I left Mr. Tremaine's apartment shortly after he did and spent the rest of the day and the whole evening with my parents. Oh? Uh-huh. I do that every week on my day off. I see, I see. You, your parents, they live here in this city, huh? Yes, of course. They share a flat with me. Mm-hmm. I, bien, I was merely curious, you know. Mademoiselle, I I do not know where this matter of the necklace may lead us, but it gives one furiously to think. What say you, Monsieur Hackett? I think Miss Fields has brought up something important. Something very, very important. Now listen, you two. You live with me, do you understand? The date was April 5th, Thursday, and I was here all evening. Were you, George? That's interesting. I don't like your tone, Daisy. And I don't like getting the short end of the deal all the time. What? What is this, Peter? Hold up? Oh, no, Hackett, I wouldn't say that, but we do all the dirty work as a rule, and you get most of the dough. Well, this time I've done all the dirty work, and you just have to be smart. That little chubby Frenchman or Belgian or whatever he is doesn't look like much, but don't let his accent and that that phony-looking mustache fool you. It's going to take great acting to make him believe that you are my parents. And it's going to take a great deal more money to make us try it. We don't want all to... All get... right, all right. I'll double your share on this job, but watch yourself. Yeah. That may be him now. I'll wait in the next room. Just in case. Uh, no rough stuff, Hackett. Now, we'll handle it with kid gloves. Yes? Bonjour, madame. My name is Poirot, Hercule Poirot. May I have a few words with you? Well, yes, come in. What is it, mama? A gentleman, pa. man named Poirot. Uh, yes, oh. and, and my secretary, Miss Thatcher. Uh, how do you do? Oh, howdy. Excuse my shoes being off. We wasn't expecting any callers. Oh, no, 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 no. Do not be deranged, monsieur. We will be here only a few moments. Uh, will you have some cherry cordial, sir? I made it myself. Oh, madame, you are too kind. No, no. I wish only to ask a few questions uh, about your son. Uh, George, what about him? Well, you know, I presume that his late employer was found murdered. Oh, yes. Uh, poor Mr. Tremaine. A kinder man there never was. Every Thursday, George would come around and talk about nothing but his wonderful Mr. Tremaine. Every Thursday, madame? Uh, Yes, sir. His day off. Tell me, on April 5th, the day of the murder, he was here that day, too, huh? Why, what do you mean, Mr. Perot? Of course he was here. All day? Oh, from, uh, oh, about uh, 2.30 on. He was teaching us to play gin rummy. Uh, Do you play gin rummy, miss? No, I'm not very good at cards, and I don't drink. Tell me, madame, where is your son now? I believe he's over at Mr. Tremaine's place, straightening things up, you know. I see, I see. Eh bien, you've both been very kind. Oh, m- must you go so soon? Uh, wait, wait. I said it would only be a moment. Come, Abigail. Well, I'm sorry George wasn't home. Uh, we'll tell him you were here. Yeah. Merci bien, madame. Lovely old couple, aren't they? I don't see how their son could do anything wrong. Hmm. I do not see how he can be their son. What? Uh, did you not observe, Abby, that the kindly old gentleman and his wife, they both have fair hair and blue eyes? Yes. But Monsieur Hackett, his eyes are dark brown. It is impossible, Abigail, for two blonde, blue-eyed parents to have anything but blue-eyed children. <laughs> help you, sir? Oh, yes, if you don't mind. I am interested in a necklace which you recently sold to a Mr. Archie Tremaine. Really? Uh, may I ask what your interest is? Oh, my name is Hercule Poirot. I would like Hercule to... Hercule Poirot, the brilliant Belgian detective. Oh, monsieur, I am flattered. Most people take me for French. We've heard of you, the diamond people in Antwerp. They speak your name with reverence. Well, thank you, thank you. Now, uh, about this necklace. Oh, yes. You yes. you did sell a necklace to Monsieur Tremaine, eh? Yes, a very fine pearl necklace. Uh, see, it was delivered to him on uh, April 3rd. April 3rd. Two days before he was murdered. Yeah, this puts a new light on everything. How so, Chief? Well, the motive, Abbey, 
If the motive was robbery, Monsieur Fields is clear. He himself is very wealthy. He would not kill for jewels. But it's gone, Chief. Who took it? I do not know, Abby. But when we find the person who has the necklace, we will have the murderer. In that case, Mr. Poirot, you'll have to arrest me. Eh? You? I have the necklace right here. Mr. Tremaine returned it on, uh, let me see, um, on April 5th, last Thursday. Monsieur Tremaine himself returned? Yes, Mr. Poirot. He bought it on the understanding that he could return it within ten days. He walked in here last Thursday. He said he'd changed his mind about the lady and the necklace. And you refunded his money? Yes, as a matter of fact, we gave him the cash. It was just after three and the banks were closed. He said he was leaving town that night. Well, there you are, Chief. That brings Mr. Fields right back into the picture. Monsieur, you are quite certain that it was Archie Tremaine who was here? Positive. Well, his picture was in the papers every other week. I imagine everybody knew what Archie Tremaine looked like. The silver hair, the monocle. Oh, no, no, then it must be so. Come, Abigail. There is still one small matter about which I must satisfy myself. Where are we going, Chief? To the library, Abby, to do some research. The library? What do you expect to find there? The biography of a murderer. Why, Miss Fields... This is a surprise. Hackett, I had to come here to Mr. Tremaine's house. I had to come and see for myself. Is there anything... I'm terribly sorry, miss. I've gone through all of Mr. Tremaine's belongings and there's not the slightest clue, not the slightest suggestion that anyone else could have killed him. It's horrible. Horrible. They've indicted him, Hackett. They're going to try my father for murder. Yes, I know. They were about to let him go because of that missing necklace. And and then they found out that it had been returned. I can't understand it. I can't believe that Archie returned it. We were going to be married. It was all agreed. Well, miss, your father was so set against it that perhaps... Oh, no, that would have made Archie more stubborn. If I could... Wait. I just thought of something. What time was that necklace returned? A little after three, according to the jeweler. At least that's what the papers say. A little after three? Yes, miss. But that's impossible. Oh, why didn't I think of it sooner? It's impossible, Hackett, because Archie was with me at the theater from 2.30 until 5. He couldn't have been at the jeweler's. You must be mistaken, miss. Oh, no, no, I'm not. The necklace was returned. Well, then someone else returned it. Someone else returned it and got the money for it. But no one had access to it except Mr. Tremaine. Oh, no one but Mr. Tremaine. <laughs> and you? Me? You, Hackett. You had access to the necklace, and you knew my father had threatened Archie. You, you're the murderer. Sit very quietly, Miss Fields. I don't want to shoot you unless I have to. You killed him. You stole the pearls, and you framed my father. I'm going to call the police. No, you don't. Tremaine tried that. Now he's dead. No, that won't do either. The door is locked. I locked it as you came in. Get away from me. Get away! I'm sorry, my dear. Now I'll just gag you so that you're not tempted to scream again. There we are. Now. Hello, Daisy. I have a little job for you. No, it's not as hard as the other one. doesn't require as much talent. Is that laundry wagon still available? It is. I have Pete drive it down here to Tremaine's place. I'll have a... a bundle ready for him. Bonjour, Monsieur Hackett. May we come in? Why, uh, the place is topsy-turvy, Mr. Poirot. I'm in the middle of packing. Good, good, good. I, I may be of some help to you. You know, I have a very orderly mind. Come, Abigail. Hey, 
Oh, but monsieur, this is not the middle of the packing. It is barely the beginning. Yes, uh, the other rooms are all done. I've left this one for the last. And after this room is packed away... The curtain will ring down on Archie Tremaine. Ah, oui, oui. You uh, phrase it so well. Of course, there is still the small matter of punishing the murderer. Yes, I know. You know, I feel sorry for him. Uh, for whom? For Mr. Fields. He's not really a murderer. I mean, say, he's not the criminal type. He was driven to do what he did. Oh? You know, that, that is very interesting, Monsieur Hackett. Very interesting. I see, I see that you are uh, quite a student of criminology. Well... Uh, oh, come, come, my friend. Do not be so modest. You have many accomplishments. Have I? But of course, of course. For example, I would suggest that you have at one time been uh, an actor. Uh, what? Do not leap so, Monsieur. Look, you frighten my secretary. She has dropped your glove. Hmm? Oh, oh, yes, my glove. Well, you, you startled me, uh, Mr. Poirot. I didn't think that anybody would remember me. I gave up the theater some years ago. Au contraire, monsieur. I, I do not remember you. I, I never saw you. But you still use the expressions of the theater. Did you not say, Monsieur Tremaine always wants top billing? <laughs> you see? Tell me, um, what was your thought on the stage? Impersonations, n'est-ce pas? I did some impersonations. Why? No, I was merely wondering if... Your experience as an actor could have something to do with this case. I'm afraid I don't understand. Well, by a strange coincidence, monsieur, this case involves a very clever impersonation. Really? Oh, uh, that's the back door. You're expecting a delivery, eh? No, it must be the laundry wagon. I'm sending out all the soil stuff. Wait, monsieur Hackett. I will go with you. You will... What? I will go with you. I have a tremendous interest in this uh, laundry. Why, there's no need for you to go. The bundle is already at the back door. Nevertheless, I should like to see it. You know, I have developed an overwhelming curiosity about the laundry ever since I picked up this glove from the floor. Glove? Oui. One solitary, unaccounted-for lady's glove. It was careless of you, Monsieur Ackett, to leave it lying about. You were much more methodical when you did away with Archie Tremaine. What? You don't know what you're talking about. I assure you, my friend, I know precisely what I'm talking about. You are a thief, Monsieur Aquette. You have been one since you gave up the acting five years ago. Yes. Ah, yes, Monsieur, I looked it up. You have plied your trade by posing as a valet or butler and stealing from your employer when the opportunity presented itself. In this case, the opportunity came on the day you saw the necklace Monsieur Tremaine had bought from his fields. You stole the necklace and went to the jewelers impersonating Tremaine and received the cash for it. Why, your man. Unfortunately, Monsieur Tremaine found you out the very same day. He threatened to call the police. So you killed him. And then, then a delicious thought occurred to you, Monsieur. The thought of implicating an innocent man. So you called the police to tell them of a murder. That was a mistake, monsieur. That was when I started right, to believe... All right, Poirot. You're clever, but you talk too much. I guess Pete will have two more bundles to take with him. Okay, Pete. Pick you... him up, Hackett. But I thought... Where's Pete? Don't worry. We've got him nice and safe in a patrol wagon. Right where you'll be in just a minute. You see, monsieur? Your goose is boiled. <laughs> Sure to listen next week when Agatha Christie, America's favorite mystery writer, brings you her favorite detective, Hercule Poirot, in the case of Death Points a Finger. Agatha Christie's Poirot is directed by Carl Eastman. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.